Hi guys, I thought I might give away some stock standard calendar code written in C. Two years ago I made a similar video giving away similar code written in PIC Basic. As shown in the last video, the traditional way to keep time and maintain a calendar was with a uh, dedicated clock chip like these from Maxim and uh, they provided a calendar usually limited to the year 2099 which is long as we we're expected to live I suppose. These have seemingly fallen by the wayside. I haven't used one since the last video, so that's two years. We've got new ways to uh, acquire the time for our microcontroller code. One of these ESP modules will uh, retrieve the time from the internet through your router, already adjusted for local time if need be. So uh, you'll know if you need calendar code, and you probably won't if you have one of those. Uh, a GPS module is another way your microcontroller might be acquiring the time and in this case you might want calendar code even though you do get the current date from a GPS module. Problems will start when you wish to display a locally adjusted time rather than UTC straight from GPS. The date that you want to display could be different and so will the time. So for this example in Australia, it just turned 7.16pm, uh, 10 hours ahead of UTC, so it was 9am uh, and it was the same date. But what if it wasn't? What if it was the 28th of February and I wanted to know if I had to display the 1st of March or the 29th of February? And that's where uh, a calendar code comes in handy. Well, more than just handy, it's absolutely necessary. And uh, the crux of a calendar code is determining whether or not this year is a leap year. You see, I don't think this is taking into account leap years, so <laughs> that could well be something to hang on to. So firstly, we were all lied to at school, and a leap year is not every four years. There are a few more ways to qualify a year as a leap year or exclude it. Uh, Wikipedia provides a good definition of this, and this is the basic code that I've used to determine that. So a nice calendar would be called as a function with the input uh, year, month, day, and it would return the day of the week that you can display, or return an error whether or, or not your input was valid. Uh, you can never trust a user to input anything correctly. Um, the user might input the date fuzzy wuzzy rabbits. My code isn't quite so formal though, having been ported from basic, all the variables I've left global. The first array there, calendar days in month, could be a constant array uh, except for the fact that the program can change the second element from 28 to 29 for a leap year and that's where you would look up the number of days in the current month. So much closer to pick basic where private variables don't exist, the code is called by setting the year, month and day, uh, however your program will do it, calling set cal and then your calendar is set and your day of the week is set and the array days in month is all set correctly. The variable cal bad entry will contain a value other than zero if the input to the calendar was bad. And all of this checking can be omitted if the input was coming from a GPS where you wouldn't expect uh, an invalid date. Uh, as long as you have a position fix and have uh, checked the checksums of the NMEA sentences, you shouldn't really receive rubbish. It's just humans you can't trust. I've included this code in the source, but for my own current implementation, it is omitted. Okay, so my code contains a little bit of a trick. The way a calendar works, once it knows uh, what's a leap year and what isn't, is by starting from an epoch year, in this case years that begin on a Monday, and count up to the current day from there. The trick is it's much quicker for the uh, microcontroller to look up a list and find the best year to start iterating from. Um, that's much quicker and guarantees a, a much better worst case time than if you only had one epoch year. This table could be expanded or even have elements removed and be contracted. And that's why I call it a 500 year calendar. It can look ahead if you don't mind how long it's going to eventually take, uh, but it can't look behind. Uh, in this case, 1798 is the first year it can look up. In the previous video, the way I tested this out was rather pedestrian. A list of dates, some of them invalid, uh, such as the 29th of February on a non-leap year should return an error. Um, and this was all basically just checked against the iPhone stock calendar app. 
If you open the iPhone calendar, you'll be presented with a table format graphic calendar of the month with the current date highlighted, and you can keep scrolling as much as you want into the future. Uh, you can even back out into a year table format calendar and keep scrolling as much as you want. I assume this is all calculated. I don't think they'll have a massive lookup table. So let's do that. I think this is probably the last program I'll squeeze into this DS pick, even though I, I was thinking the same thing two programs ago. Um, I've got to acquire the date first from GPS. The calendar program only checks uh, for the date once. It won't keep polling the GPS. So I'm going to acquire it with another program, the Astro Time program. And that's because if the date has been acquired, the calendar will open up on the correct month and highlight the correct date, which uh, this video is shot over a couple of days, so it's uh, now the 8th of July. Had the current date not been acquired, it would have opened on a default uh, month, January 2017. To cram this all onto the screen, I had to come up with a new font. Uh, well, not a complete font, just uh, this is really a monochrome bitmap image. And uh, yeah, that's part of the grunt work that uh, programming can bring to you. Um, in this case, this image is actually loaded from SD card. This will eventually be released as a whole project, um, but the calendar code I've left making few assumptions. It's not quite this embellished with the header text there. Um, I've only assumed that the user can draw uh, text at given coordinates, so it'll just draw uh, the letters for the days of week and a very plain header for the month and year. This graphic table format GUI is really just a demo of the fundamental code that I've already showed you. I don't imagine the user would be uh, wanting to always do this. I have included the GUI though as a separate function uh, and you'll find it in a forum post on the EEV blog forum and there'll be a link in the description for that. Okay, I think the project in its entirety is done. Uh, hopefully uh, the next video isn't about this. <laughs> Catch us next time.